All right, let's talk about how to graph sine and cosine. So first, what is a graph? A graph is just a diagram that shows the relationship between two variables, uh, each measured a pair along one pair of axes, right? So the x-axis and the y-axis. So when we graph sine of x or cosine of x, and I wrote there f of x equals the sine of x or y equals the cosine of x because you can use f of x or y to represent the range, uh, but x is a domain. Um, there's two variables, angles and ratios. So like what you plug in is the angle, and what you get out is the ratio. So the domain are the x values. That's going to be the angles. So you only plug angles at the sine and cosine. Now when we graph, we're going to do it in radians. And um, you'll, you'll see that it's actually not that bad, even though you're probably more comfortable with degrees. But this will help you also understand your radians. Um, the range are ratios. So we know that sine and cosine normally are equal things between 1 and negative 1, but when we manipulate our functions by multiplying the sine of x or cosine of x or adding and subtracting, the ranges can change. But the domain always going to be all real numbers because you could plug any angle into sine or cosine and get a ratio. And that has a lot to do with the unit circle. So um, this is a pretty cool GIF if you um, click on it, but we are going to kind of recreate the GIF by hand right now by graphing sine and cosine. So we're going to use the unit circle to sketch a graph of first f of x equals the sine of x and then y equals the cosine of x. Okay, so anytime you graph you want a pair of axes, so I got an x-axis and a y-axis and we are going to be graphing y equals the sine of x, which is the same thing as f of x equals the sine of x. Now we're going to graph one full period. So remember that these y coordinates are the different values of sines for the corresponding angles. Now these angles are in degrees, but we're going to graph in radians. Um, so they're also given in radians too. I didn't see that. Um, so the outer numbers are radians. And we're going to graph one full period. All right, so we're going to graph all these points for one full rotation. All right, sine's a periodic function, which means it repeats its y values after a certain set of x values. And the period of this function is going to be 2 pi, 360 degrees. Uh, the reason why is once you go 360 degrees around the unit circle, you're right back where you started. So when you go from 2 pi to 4 pi, you're just going to cycle through all these same ratios because all those angles are coterminal to zero, the angles have coterminal angles between zero and two pi. All right, and then that kind of carries on. So um, since there's four major quadrants, there's like four points we want to graph for every period. So I'm going to mark that off on our graph, make that pi, make this three pi over two, and make this pi over two. And since the maximum sine can equal is one, and the negative, uh, the lowest, the minimum can equal is negative one. That's going to be my set of axes there. Oh. Okay, so now we're just going to plot points and then connect the dot. So from this point here, we see that the sine of zero is zero. Okay, then we'll go up to ninety degrees. Uh, no need to plot all the points in between zero and ninety. Um, and we see that when the sine of the sine of pi over two is one. So we'll place that point right there. All right, the sine of 180, or pi, is going to be 0. So we're back down to there. And then the sine of 3 pi over 2, right, we're looking at the y-coordinate, um, is going to be negative 1. And then back to where we started, 2 pi is coterminal to 0, so we're back at 0. And this is what one period of sine will look like, which starts right in the middle on the axis, goes to a max, comes back down to the middle, down to the minimum, and then back to where we started. And if we were to now keep graphing uh, from 2 pi to 4 pi, it would just continue this pattern because we'd be using the same angles. All right, And that's pretty much what a graph of sine looks like. Okay, now to graph y equals the cosine of x. Um, again, this is our x-axis, our y-axis. Uh, we're going to use the x-coordinates because in a unit circle, where a specific angle crosses the unit circle, the x-coordinate is going to be the cosine of that angle. So we'll start at 0, uh, comma 1, because the cosine of 0 is 1. And then the cosine of 90 is 0. So we're back to here. 
and the cosine of pi is negative 1. And the cosine of 270 is 0. And then back over to 2 pi, which is coterminal to 0, so that will also equal 1. All right, so this is what a graph of cosine will look like. And it looks very similar to sine. Um, and that's because they have, they, they have a lot in common. They have the same points, just they occur at different x values. So um, the main difference between sine and cosine is that cosine will start on the maximum, at the maximum, uh, unless it's reflected, of course. So like something like y equals negative cosine of x will just look like this, a reflected version of that. Whoops, it should go through that point there. Um, but it cosine always starts at the max or min, and then goes back to the axis. Whereas cosine, I'm sorry, whereas sine starts in the middle, no matter what. So like y equals the sine of x is going to start right in the middle, and that's what our graph of, of sine looked like before. And no matter what, it'll start in the middle, right on the axis. If it was negative sine, it would still start in the middle, but it would go down first, it would get reflected and look like that. Okay, so uh, this, this yellow graph and these, this red graph are going to be our parent functions. And now we're going to learn how to transform them to graph different versions of y equals the sine of x and y equals the cosine of x.